that youth, that 16 year old, didn't stop that Drew. He was an athlete, right? He was a baseball player. He wants to be a professional baseball player. He was an athlete. A bad boy stabbed a man. Somebody who was does bad things and sees bad things. An athlete sees people, is interested in stretching, exercising, going to his baseball games or going to his football games. He's not interested in stabbing people or just like jumping into something he has no idea about. A bad boy. Somebody who's groomed in badness or did badness before stabbed a man. I know because I used to be a bad boy and I used to be an athlete. And when I was an athlete, I was an athlete. And all I thought about was athlete. I wasn't going to shepherdize my athleticism or my career to do things that bad people do. And when I became a bad boy, I was a bad boy. I wasn't an athlete. And I was grooming myself to do things that was bad. So he's an athlete, not a bad boy. There's difference. In most of New York at Crown Heights, they have two things to do. Either be a bad boy or be a DJ. You know, MC, rapper, Jamaica ragamuffin, or be a bad boy. Sell drugs or rap. What do you do? I sell drugs. What do you do? I'm a DJ. I rap. That's the way it is in Brown Heights. And I've been living in Crown House for most of my life. I know for a fact that that youth, that 16 year old, didn't stop that, 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 that Jew. That's between me and my creator. I'm comfortable with that because we have, I, I think there's a tendency to make hay of our Holocaust stories and to use them to push buttons. And, and I mean, this story about my uncle Isaac makes me cry. And it's going to make other people cry. And I'm beginning to worry that if we continue to trot these stories out, we are going to inure each other of their real meaning. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I well, Yeah, I know, I'm... Yeah, you're right. I, I, that, that's all right, then. Maybe if you... Maybe if you let me read it. I... Okay, oh, I'm, I'm gonna read it. Okay, I, I think that would be okay. Okay. I remember my mother's cousin Isaac, who came to New York immediately after the war and lived with us for several months. Isaac is my connection to dozens of other family members who were murdered in the concentration camps. Because he was blonde and blue eyed, he had been chosen as the designated survivor of his town. That is the Jewish councils had instructed him to do anything to stay alive and tell the story. For Isaac, anything turned out to mean this. The Germans suspected his forged Aryan papers and decided that he would have to prove by his actions that he was not a Jew. They put him on a transport train with the Jews of his town and then gave him the task of herding into the gas chambers everyone in his train load. After he had fulfilled that assignment with patriotic German efficiency, the Nazis accepted the authenticity of his papers and let him go. Among those whom Isaac packed into the gas chambers that day, dispassionately, as if shoving a few more items into an overstuffed closet, were his wife, 
and two children. The designated survivor arrived in America at about the age of 40 with prematurely white hair and a dead gaze within the sky blue eyes that helped save his life. As promised, he told his story to dozens of Jewish agencies and community leaders and to groups of families and friends, which is how I heard the account translated from his Yiddish by my mother. For months he talked, speaking the unspeakable, describing a horror the American Jews had suspected but could not conceive. A monstrous tale that dwarfed the demonology of legend and gave me the nightmare I still dream to this day. And as he talked, Isaac seemed to grow older and older until one night, a few months later, when he finished telling everything he knew, he died. <laughs>